There's an extraordinary bungle emerging tonight in one of WA's most controversial murder cases. We can reveal that police made a crucial mistake when determining how broom man Josh Wanaki was killed. A cold case review has found there was no murder weapon and the 21-year-old who was supposedly bashed to death was actually run over by a car. 60 Minutes reporter Liam Bartlett has this exclusive investigation. It's a case defined by police incompetence and negligence and the wrongful imprisonment of this man, Gene Gibson. It's why the major crime squad got disbanded and rebuilt, albeit no one got sacked. Um, it's why Gene Gibson is not in jail anymore and he got his payout, which he deserved. It's 10 years, almost to the day, since 21-year-old Josh Warnicky was found dead on the side of a Broome highway. According to police and pathology reports, he was bashed to death with an edged weapon, such as an axe or a tomahawk. But now revelations that Josh Warnicky wasn't bashed at all. It just seems to be one thing after another, so um, I'm sad to say that it doesn't surprise me. A cold case review of the killing has concluded that Josh suffered fatal head wounds from being struck by a car's wheel. When you try to understand how your child died, to know that he wasn't um, beaten in that way is more comforting, I guess, but it doesn't make it any easier that he's dead. The original murder investigation identified Gibson, an illiterate and brain-damaged desert Aboriginal. But detectives botched the key interviews with Gibson, who, it turned out, could hardly speak English, let alone understand it. Despite that, he pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to seven and a half years in jail. In 2016, an investigation by 60 Minutes uncovered serious flaws in the forensic evidence that put Gibson in jail. After almost five years behind bars, the young man was freed and the state government agreed to pay him $1.3 million in compensation. But three years on, this latest evidence raises new questions about the case. The big question now is who was driving the car that ran over Josh? Incredibly, when police first questioned Gene Gibson, he admitted to running over Josh accidentally. He said, mistake, hit him with a car. But at the time, police didn't think the forensics matched up. So are police again looking at Gibson and others who were riding in a car together that night in Broome? Well, the new team doing the investigation, that is their brief. As someone who has looked at all the crime scene photographs, Josh's mother cannot understand how it has come to this. I'm not a um, forensic pathologist, I'm not a crime scene investigator, uh, but Blind Freddy can see that there is evidence to suggest that Josh has been hit by a car. WA Police refused to talk publicly about the ongoing investigation and tell Nine News they are progressing a report for the coroner. Liam Bartlett, Nine News.